you for joining me. You can be anywhere in the goddamn world, but you're here with me. And I love that shit. Okay, I am kind of experimenting with my lighting. As you can tell, there's a reflection from my glasses. And that's driving me fucking crazy. Um, anyway, we're going to do a dun 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 dun. We're going to do a tag. But before we start the tag, I'm going to go ahead and prime my face and all that other kind of stuff. <clears throat> Okay, I have a dog named Nala. Nala has been with me exactly a year. I got Nala after I had to put down my dog, Tasia, of 15 years. Um, Tasia was um, the link between me and my mother. Um, when I moved out, after I got clean, and I moved out, um, the apartment complex that I moved into would not take dogs. So my mom asked me, well, what are you going to do? And I said, can I leave Tasia here? And she said yes. And so my dog then became my mother's dog. Okay. Um, when my mom got very sick and she was no longer able to care for Tasia, my dad called me. He said, I need you to come get the dog. And Tasia was not happy about it. She did not like living here. She made that very clear. Um, and when I found out, when I realized that something was wrong with her, I think it was a Monday, and I had to put her down that Sunday. So I came home and I uh, put everything away and immediately I was very um, lonely. Because although Tasia didn't like me, <laughs> uh, she was still here. And she was still my dog. And she was me and my mother's dog. So then I started looking online for, you know, dogs that I could adopt. And so I went to various places and I really wanted a boxer. So I was on my way to this boxer that was um, being foster was in foster care. Now, why the hell can we not have children in foster care get adopted? I don't know. But dogs in foster care, they get adopted. I don't understand it, but I digress. So I was on my way to see this boxer, and I stopped at the Houston uh, SPCA, which, by the way, I would sleep in. It's so damn nice. And there was four dogs that I wanted to see. Nala was the last dog that I wanted to see. I'm going to pop a picture of Nala here or a video of her right here. Okay. And so the lady was like, hey, her kennel's first. Let's just go ahead and let you see her. So I walked in and she did this. Mm -hmm. Cocked her head to the side, flopped her ears down. And I said, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I didn't see any other dog um, they asked me if I wanted to go in her with her in a room with her now I've never uh, Tasia was the only dog I've ever had and Nala is a big dog uh, when I got her she was 42 pounds she's easily 55 because I feed her like she's a horse um, and when they took me in the room I was kind of afraid because she was a big dog she jumped up in my lap, jumped up on me, and tried to literally get in my lap. She's And she's a big dog. And she was licking my face, and she was just very, very much wanted my attention and wanted me to pay attention to her and see, I'm here, I'm here, pay attention to me, love me, love me, love me. That's how it felt. And so um, the lady started telling me about her, that her... Um, litter was bred for the Secret Service and um, there was like 14 in her litter and three were not taken for various reasons. Nala was not taken because she was emotion too emotional. I'm like what the fuck are you talking about dog being an emotional? But that her breed was the same breed that captured Osama bin Laden was using the Secret Service and the Israeli Army. And if you don't know, the Israeli Army is one of the, well, is the um, most aggressive and toughest army in the world. And she is part Malinois and part Dutch Shepherd. She is extremely smart. She is very friendly. She's friendly to other dogs. She's friendly to kids. And she's friendly to people in general now if she knows that I feel threatened she, you better get ready she's coming for your ass um, but if my, she sees that oh mommy's okay with this person then she's okay with the person um, so when the lady started telling me that I said well why hasn't she been adopted she goes she's not house trained 
<sighs> so now it's been with me a year and we are still struggling with potty training for a number of reasons and now that I'm working again I'm gone all day and that's just not fair to her so when I get home and on the weekends I try to spend a lot of time with her I digress so in the apartment complex they allow like pit bulls and boxers and all this other kind of stuff which is fine fine whatever there is the way we walk every morning we turn a corner and there's a pit bull and a boxer a gray pit bull and a, a brown and white boxer okay and the owners of this dog of these dogs is two gentlemen that live together they walk out and the dogs are not on a leash okay that's a huge problem because there's a leash law in uh, in Houston and you live in a community with other people with other animals and your dogs would be sweet as lemon pie but I don't know that and Nala's dumbass thinks that everybody wants to play with her until one day the dog started to rush us last week and I was freaking out I was crying I was so scared and the owner goes and they turned around and went back I was pissed you have that kind of control over the, your dogs but you let them rush us so just right now I'm walking Nala and when we come around that curve I'm like trying to see if they're out on the porch because they go crazy and they weren't out there but they were walking out of their apartment and I started flipping out like oh my god oh my god oh my god he's like it's okay it's okay don't worry he's like I got him and the dogs were super obedient they waited for us to pass I'm shitting my pants because if these dogs attack my dog I'm gonna fuck them up what you know I'm gonna fuck up your dog I'm coming for your dog if your dog hurts my dog and so Nala thinks they want to play I'm like look dumbass they don't want to play with you so he's telling me that um, the gray one the pit bull doesn't like other dogs but the boxer likes other dogs he's like they're very obedient that's how I train them I said that's how you train your dogs I don't know that I don't know anything other than that dog is listed on the most vicious dog list so how you raise them how you train them fine but I don't know that and that's not fair to me I'm a single woman I live alone and that's not fair to me so can you at least wait until we walk until me and Nala walk in the morning before you bring them out off leash can you at least do that shit girl he didn't know what to say and he was like, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, like all that kind of shit. He didn't know what to say. He's like, I, I can do that. I can do that. I go, you know, it, I just don't understand. Like you live in a community. If you lived in your own house, that'd be fine, but you don't. So anyway, that's what happened this morning. I'm still a little pissed about it. So I wanted to like process it. This morning, we're going to do the high-end makeup tag. It's a twist on Jen Phillips' drugstore tag. And this was by, oh gosh oh gosh this is an older youtuber um a little older than me i can't think of her name if i can think of her name i'll list it in the description box so if you could only use one high-end one high-end makeup brand what would it be okay so for that question what would it be it would have to be a brand that i could use everything from okay so like i would have to be able to use their foundation i would have to be able to use um, their powder no and that is really really difficult because I don't have a lot of high-end foundations um, and there's not a lot of like I'm trying to think if there's anything that I'm like die hard about like one there's never there's not one brand that I'm like yes 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 like that's they have everything I want um, I will say my complexion products from um, Too Faced I really enjoy and I enjoy certain parts of Too Faced's um, eyeshadows but I guess they would be the closest unfortunately or Urban Decay the all nighter is my favorite um, I like the Urban Decay um, face powder I like their blushes 
I like their highlighters. And for the most part, I like their eyeshadows. So I guess I would say if I had to pick one that I really like that I would use everything in their pro oh Marc Jacobs Marc Jacobs it would be Marc Jacobs because I've used Marc Jacobs um, foundation and I've used the powder I've used the blush I've used the highlighter and I've used his um, eyeshadows and those would, that would be Marc Jacobs done that was a good question okay what is what's the most overrated high-end brand Ooh. definitely Too Faced um, Urban Decay is overrated um Anastasia. Anastasia. I'm just being real with it, y'all. Anastasia is really overrated. That's my opinion, and I'm not going to go into it. Because if you don't know why, then, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Number three. What's the most, um, oh, I missed one. What's the most underrated high-end brand? Underrated high-end brand. underrated high-end brand I'm looking around I think Tarte oh I could have said Tarte for everything but um what what's the one that high-end brand um, that you use everything from I could have said Tarte but Tarte I think is really underrated um I think people kind of lock them into a box ever since that whole debacle with the shades um, not being inclusive enough. And by the way, the shades were pl very inclusive. Just everybody was tripping over that. It was ridiculous. Um, but I think Tarte is definitely underrated. What's your favorite high-end product? 25. I can't see that. Hold on. I'm blind. Um, what's your favorite high-end product? $25 or less. <laughs> I don't know if it's $25 or less. Um, oh, the Jouer. I love the Jouer um, uh, Topaz. I like that. That's under $25. Um, the Fenty lip balm, lip balm or whatever the hell. I really like that. Um... Anastasia's lip glosses. I think they're under $25. Um, those are some of the ones I can think of off the top of my head. Mm -mm. Let's see. What is a high-end hidden gem that's not usually talked about? I would say Laura Geller's blushes and highlighters. I don't think a lot of people talk about them. Um, because Laura Geller in and of itself is a boring brand and so not a lot of people talk about them so I think their blushes and highlighters are outstanding they're definitely some of my favorites and um, yeah that's what I think about that what's your favorite high-end foundation um, it would have to be a tie between the Peach Perfect foundation and the um, Urban Decay All Nighter. And both serve different purposes, right? The Urban Decay All Nighter is like matte, 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 like spackle. And the um, Peach Perfect is more like a um, comfort matte. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> What's your favorite high-end found this? Oh, I already said that. What product do you always buy high-end rather than drugstore? Um, eyeshadows. Eyeshadow palettes. I always buy high-end eyeshadow palettes over drugstore uh, um, palettes. Preference. You know, just, I mean, that's it. That's, you guys should know that by now. Um... What high-end brand is way overpriced? I think some of Pat McGrath's stuff is overpriced, like her foundation. I think La Mer is way overpriced. Chanel is way overpriced for, like, what they give you. Get out of here. Like, it's nothing. Um, Givenchy, overpriced. 
Shiseido, overpriced. Like, for what they offer, you know what I'm saying? Like, they don't offer you enough for you to be interested to pay that much. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, guys. Um, Charlotte Tilbury, overpriced. Tom Ford, overpriced. Now, if they were, like, coming with the fire, you know what I'm saying? Like, they were burning that bitch up, that'd be different. But their stuff is basic. It's not good. The pigmentation is basic. I can get the same out of a Wet n Wild palette, to be honest with you. So that's how I feel about that. Um, what is your favorite low price, high end product? Low price, high end product. Low priced, high end product. Low priced, high end product. Let me think about that for a second. Low priced. High-end product. I think I would have to say it would be an indie brand. I would say um, Sound Cosmetics, which is an indie brand that I fuck with hardcore. I would say um, MBA Cosmetics, also very affordable high-end brand. Um, and I'm talking about quality, I'm not talking about price. I'm talking about quality is high end. Price is, you know, much more affordable. So, those two. What's the best high end eyeshadow palette formula? Natasha Denona, you guys know that. Come on, come on, come on. Natasha Denona, Melt, um, MBA, Sun Cosmetics, Touch of Glam, uh, Girl Meets Makeup. Those are all indie brands that I respect tremendously and buy their products over and over again. So, um, what's the worst high end eye eyeshadow formula? Smashbox? Can I say that out loud? <laughs> Smashbox is awful. Just fucking terrible. Like, I don't know who buys their shit. It's just awful. Smashbox, who else is really bad? Oh my god. As much as I love Lori Geller, um, her, eyesh her eyeshadows and her face palettes are terrifying. They're so bad. Now her blushes and highlighters, great. But anything else? No. Um, who else? I think those are the ones that come to my mind right off the top of my um top of my uh, head there I'm using the thirsty palette and I'm just making something up as I go along okay high-end brand you used to love but no more I used to love hmm I used to love Too Faced of course and Urban Decay and, and my love affair with them has definitely depleted um, I'm trying to think of somebody more significant Um, I'm trying to think. I can't think of anybody. Just because I can't stand Too Faced so much. Um, Mac. I used to be really hardcore into Mac. And I, I would like to see some of the Macs. I'd like to buy some of their new stuff. But I'm not really into Mac like I used to be. Uh, and The Rock. Unfortunately... That makes me really sad to say I'm not into La Rock like I used to be. Hey, baby. Do y'all hear that noise? Hey, baby. Can you, can you see her? There, yeah, that's Nala. <laughs> Nalita. Nalita. What do you you going to say hello? You say hello, hi. Can y'all see her? Can you say hello? Can you say hi? Can you say, oh, it's sweet. Okay, mommy be back. Mommy be out there in a minute. This is my life. You see that tail? What, booby? What? 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 Yeah, don't look at my makeup. This is my life. She wants my attention all the time. Okay, next one. High-end product that you told that totally wowed you. Sydney Grace. Touch of Glam. 
um Jimmy's place keeps coming out with shit that I'm just like yes 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 um let's see um who else I hope I don't knock this over let's just use this one um Jeevious Place just keeps coming with the hits, man. They really do. What are you doing? She's on the ground. Um, but I really, and I love Love Lux. Love Lux Beauty. I, I can't speak highly enough of them. Uh, I'm not affiliated with them. I'm not affiliated with anybody, but I really love Love Lux. I really fuck with them hardcore. I really like them. I'm gonna have to use my finger on this one. Oh no, it's okay. Okay, favorite high-end eyeshadow palette. Um, of all my Natasha Denona ones, my favorite one is palette five number three and palette five number nine. Those are my two favorites. Um, I can show you really quickly. I had them in that project pan. One, two, three. This is number three. And I've used it a lot. That's palette five number three. Okay. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Palette five number nine. This one's kind of falling apart. Yeah. Those are my two favorite out of all of my Natasha and Nana ones. I love those those the best. So let me help let me figure this out. Okay, then what else? Best high-end lipstick gloss formulas. Okay, um, I don't know what happened to this. Lancome used to make this really amazing um, lip gloss, but I cannot find it anywhere, not even on their website. But if they make it, Lancome has this beautiful lip gloss. Anastasia, I love hers, and Pat McGrath, which is gonna what I'm going to wear in a minute. Um... Let me see if you guys, I don't know if I can do it with this, I'm using a different type of camera. There you go. I don't know, you can see. I use, um, what I ended up using is, um, I use this, then this, and then in the inner, inner right, right here, I use this, and then I use this on the lid, so. Um, okay, now I need to do my, what the hell is it called, my lashes, y'all are in my face, okay, um, okay, I guess that's it, those are all of it, those are all, those are all of them, all the tags, so let's back, let's back you up, there we go. And I'm going to do, I think I showed this in another video, I don't know if it's already posted or not, but, um, where I show, let me see, let me see, where is it, okay, here is the, let me go ahead and do this liner, I'm going to use this, um, this is a Too Faced, um, uh, stretch marker, this is the color. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. It's like a really, let me show you. Yeah, so that's what I'm using. There you go. A lot of people don't use um, like felt tip under their eyes, but I do. I just have to be really careful. There we go. There we go. Okay, boom, done. Now, I'm going to zoom you in so you can see. Um, okay. All right. 
This is the L'Oreal Voluminous Primer. Okay, you guys can't tell me that that's not amazing. Okay, I'm going to do the bottoms. Look at that. Okay, so we're going to do the other side real quick. Child, you cannot tell me that that's not beautiful. Okay, that's fucking amazing. <laughs> Don't tell me it's not, because it is. And then we're just going to... I've been using my sumptuous, but um, I need to use my, here it is. This is my voluminous carbon black. That's what I usually use. I've been trying to use up my Estee Lauder sumptuous, which is my second favorite. <laughs> Excuse me. I'll get the fuck out of here. Okay, I'm done. I'm done talking to y'all about this. <laughs> I'm going go underneath a little bit more. Oh, I forgot to mention to you guys, there's a, a lady that lives in the building across from me that just lets her dog out. Like, she opens the door and her dog just goes out, and it's a little baby dog. I was backing out to get groceries, and I almost hit the goddamn dog, because the dog is like tiny, 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 and he's not supposed to be out there, or she's not supposed to be out there, because, um, you know, this, there's a leash law, and you're supposed to attend to your animal. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you, lady? Hold on. Oh my god, hold on. Now you can see it. Okay, let me go back. Okay. Like, you're supposed to attend to your animal. Like, I'm not responsible for your animal's death if you're not paying attention to it. Like, get the fuck out of here. Hold on, let me see. I kind of want to use one of my... No, let's use this one. This is... I love CoverGirl lipsticks. This is the Demi Matte... This is the color. So we're going to come behind it with um, a lip gloss that's kind of in the same color by Essence. I'm trying not to knock over this ring light that I have right here. That's it. Now, we need to do something with this fucking hair. Don't you think? Or should we just go out here looking crazy? I feel good about that. Right? You feel good about that? I mean, look at the cute, right? Listen, I'm not trying to impress nobody but me. Ain't nobody paying attention to me. And if they do, and I'm probably not interested in them because they ain't worth my goddamn time. And that's the tea, honey. Okay, guys, thank you for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed the tag. I don't know the name of the lady who did this tag, but if I figure it out, I will leave it in the description bar below. I know the original tag was created by Samantha March, I want to say. Uh, let me see. 
Jen Phelps. Jen Phelps, who used to be called Butte Addiction. I think that's what her name used to be. Um, anyway, that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I really do appreciate any time that you spend with me. Um, this last couple of weeks have been kind of difficult for me, transitioning to going back to work. I had um, a loss of a friend, like not a death, but like a friend that decided they didn't want to be friends with me anymore, which kind of hurt my heart. Um, I am a difficult person to get along with. My mom used to say all the time, Bridget is easy to love, hard to like. And it's true. I am hard to like. Uh, and I know that about myself. And it, it ends up screwing up a lot of my relationships. But I'm a pro I'm, you know, progress, not perfection. I'm not a perfect person. And I'm just striving to be better each and every day. So um, thank you for hanging out with me. I do appreciate your time. If there's uh, anything you want to see, guys, let me know so I can like work on doing that. Also, if you caught the video where I talk about the sassy bitches over 40, uh, if that's not the name that you want to hear, tell me something different like make makeup tutorials for women over 40, but that's too bland. I need something with some snap to it. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, if things are going sideways in your life, just remember it gets real, it gets different, it gets real fucking different. Hang on for the ride, guys. Help is on the way. Take care. Bye.